Let me explain something. I need to put down context before I get into this video and you watch me make the thing that I'm about to make. I was in the middle of editing the Werehog hoodie and the video for that, but my laptop hit a blue screen and so that stopped me editing on that entirely. The laptop survived this bloody thing survived a blue screen and it still works miraculously i don't know how but it's still alive but i couldn't edit anything on here anymore because it was too risky the laptop is like 14 years old and i didn't want to risk it having another blue screen incident and as a result of that i bought an entirely new computer this is a gaming PC, but it's also powerful enough to run Sony Vegas Pro 13. I bought this bad boy and this monitor with the money I had to replace the laptop. I do still use the laptop every now and again, but not very often nowadays. It's mainly just something to hold like pictures and files on there that I transfer from like one to the other. Here we are, the 12th of December, 2022 and I am going to edit this video again. When my laptop blue screened on me, I had almost finished it. When it blue screened, I couldn't open Sony Vegas. And for those of you who follow me on Instagram will remember the fiasco I had trying to recover my London MCM comic on vlog. My dad decided to, well, he didn't decide. I practically begged him to save it and he saved it. I was able to upload that video, but I couldn't save the werehog video. I originally wasn't going to edit it, I originally was just going to leave it and just pretend it never happened, but it's bugging me. Bugging me that, you know, I was so close to finishing it and to give up now with all the footage that I have would be a waste of my time. So I've decided that I'm just going to sit here and plow through it and then get it out as soon as I can. Bear in mind the footage that you will see after this intro, which I've had to record again, is footage from November 2022. When I started recording, it was almost no, it was, sorry, it was almost Halloween. Now it's almost Christmas. So it'll be the new year by the time this actually comes out. But just bear in mind that if I say anything like, oh, spooky season, just, yeah, it was back in Halloween period 2022. This is the fan art that I based my design off. I take no credit in this fan art because it's not my fan art. This fan art is by Naka, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name wrong, but Naka is an artist on Tumblr who I found this image for a Google search. Was it Google search? It was either Instagram or Google. And I think it was on my Sonic account that I found this image. I instantly fell in love with it because I loved the idea of a werehog hoodie that I could wear in public with its little spike and its ears and I was just absolutely obsessed. So I contacted Naka on Tumblr and asked for their permission to use their fan art to recreate the actual hoodie that they had drawn and they were over the moon and allowed me access to literally anything I wanted to do with their art. After I got their permission I went out to the fabric store and I got three pieces of fabric. Like the main things I needed. The things I got was the fluffy stuff to go around the neck and on the cuffs. And then I got some fleece, which was the main colour of the bodice. And then I got some grey bits to go on the end of the spikes and onto the ears. The main thing I wanted to do with this hoodie to make it very cosy and comfy, like I wanted it to be a unit, like a beast. <laughs> I wanted it to be so warm because it's now winter at the minute. This is why I chose fleece as my main fabric for the bodice, because fleece is very thick. Although my sewing machine didn't like that at all, but hey ho. It's not something that the machine hasn't done before. I tell you now, and I'm probably going to say this in the footage that I'm going to show. Originally, I wasn't going to add the neck piece. I originally wasn't going to add this. Purely for the fact that I thought, one, it could be itchy, and two, I didn't want it getting caught in the zip. But I, I then changed my mind, and once I got to that stage of putting the fluffy stuff on. I put it around my neck and then thought, ah, this looks good. So I'm going to go with it. Although it turns out that the neck piece doesn't get in the way of the zip. If anything, the cuffs do. Hopefully all of that made sense. Hopefully my explanation as to why this video is very fashionably late. A lot of things happened behind the scenes. And if it wasn't for my laptop dying on me, 
then this video would have been out by that by now but i can't control that so without further ado i'm gonna get editing get this get this sorted you'll watch this when it comes out but i hope you enjoy from what i can salvage from my laptop i went to my fabric box and pulled out the existing hoodie that i had planned to use for this there was no way i was going to draft out an entirely new pattern when i had a hoodie that i didn't want and didn't wear anymore so i planned to cut this up entirely i laid it down on the table and then just to see if I got the right side out, which I did, so I turned it inside out and laid it back down onto the table, flattening it as I went. When I'm using an existing hoodie or t-shirt as my pattern and I'm cutting it up into the pieces that I need on the fabric, I use the scissors to follow along the existing seam on the inside. And so you can see that I went up to the armpit and then I went around the shoulder and I continued until I got all the way around the entire hoodie so the pieces were set apart. I even went down the sleeves and I took off the cuffs. Then once I had done all my pieces, I then started to pin them to the fleece, the blue fleece that is my main base for this hoodie. Cutting out the pieces in the fabric as I go. Here is my spirit level and this is the front of the bodice, this is the front part where the zip will go and all that jazz. I am no good at cutting in straight lines so I used my spirit level and I placed it as straight as I could and used it as a guide for my scissors to go along. And that's when I remembered that the bottom of this hoodie is going to have some cuff fabric. So this straight line in the grand scheme of things is not going to matter, like you're not going to realise or even notice how uneven it is. But my brain at the time, my inner OCD was obsessed with trying to get this cut as straight as I could. This right here is the spike piece that I kept from my Sonic cosplay when I made him back in 2020. I decided to keep this piece in case I needed to use it again and I definitely needed it for this hoodie. I get a lot of people asking me questions how I made the spike and here is a similar method to what I used for my Sonic cosplay when I made him in 2020. The spike is basically two pieces that are sewn together to make a tube. Think of it like a shark fin except it's pointing down instead of up. If you were to make a shadow hoodie or something to do with shadow, shadow spikes would be pointing up. When I did the research for my Sonic cosplay and I did a lot of research into the shape of his spikes, I noticed that shadow spikes pointed up and Sonic's pointed down. And that was quite a good sort of like thing to remember. When doing research for the Werehog hoodie, I noticed that Sonic spikes were a little bit longer at the end. So what I did, I traced around the existing spike pattern that I had, as you saw me doing, but I extended it at the end a little Little bit. For references on the spike placement, I did used to have my own notes but I lost them. I used a lot of how to draw Sonic the Hedgehog pictures from Google to see where the spikes were placed. I knew that I needed six spikes in total. I used this picture specifically to see the back of his head. As I stated before, Sonic spikes droop down and this was the best image I could find to display the placement. Each spike had two layers of fabric to it, so in the end I had about 12 spikes to put together to make six of them. This is the result of cutting several layers of fleece at once. I accidentally made a scuff on my finger from the scissors pressing too hard. I quickly had to go into the house to get myself a plaster because I kept catching it and I'm an absolute wuss when it comes to pain and my pain tolerance is non-existent. I tried everything on for size just to make sure that I had sewn everything in the right place. The next step to this would be to sew down the sides of the bodice. That's what I would normally do, but it's a good job I didn't because I then suddenly realized... Pockets. ISG, place the camera where no one can see what you're doing. Great idea. Just like with the bodice, I already had an existing pattern for some pockets. Using some scrap piece of fabric that I had left from the blue fleece, I folded it in half, pinned it together, and then I cut them out.
At this point it was getting late. I had just finished sewing down one side of the bodice with the side pocket. Even though I had ambitiously wanted to get both sides done, I was like really tired and really hungry at this point so I needed to stop. My toxic trait is that whenever I'm sewing in the g-shed I look at the time and think one more hour and then that one more hour turns into three and then before I know it it's dark outside. And that concluded my first day, I was really proud of the progress I had made so far. And as much as I would love to stay and do some more, I really wanted some katsu curry. Good morning. The sun's in my face, so I can't quite um, see very well. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's that thing in. Wait, can I car? Haha, -ha, there we go. <laughs> I forgot cars could do this. Guess what? I had to quickly go out today, this morning. It's like, what time is it? My car will say. 970 no there's no such thing as 974 947 i had to quickly go out today to post a thing but at the same time the fabric shop was down the road so i got some fabric like you know a meter of fabric to go around the hood and i also got a zip which was the bits that i was missing i just need cuff fabric for now but we'll come to that when we get there you know what i mean now i'm gonna go home and we're gonna go straight into the g shed when we get back i keep um a spare dressing gown in in here um for the winter so <laughs> I can wrap up warm. Oh my god, I am freezing. I also have a spare pair of slippers as well, in case I need those. And we have our supply of energy. Let's get to work. I've put the heating on. I need to put on my music. What we're doing is we're sewing the bodice, the pockets, um and the sleeves together to make one piece and then we're gonna put the zip in and then we're gonna put the hood on no we're gonna put the zip in work on the hood then put the hood on yes that's what we're gonna do <laughs> i know it's, it's very hard for me to just explain i know what i'm doing basically um you just watch me do it Bear in mind, obviously, I'm wearing like something on top. Oh shit! Fuck! Wrong way round! No! Gee, you had one job. I have pockets. Pockets. The pockets are long, uh, but that's okay. Oh wait, no, you can't see, can you? Let me just turn this. Let me put this down. There you go. You can see. Look, the pockets are a bit long, but I want them that long. But yeah. There's my phone, right? The pockets are enough to keep a phone in there. Like, I can get my phone out nicely. And that's why I made big pockets, because I like to have big pockets to fit phones and purses in. So in my fabric box, I just found some cuff fabric, but it's black. It's not a dark blue like the fan art. However, after kind of thinking about it and considering it, I think I might put black cuff on the bottom 
if you can imagine that just to save money because i don't particularly want to spend out especially considering that comic con is less than a week i don't think it would get here in time and I don't want to be spending lots of money on like more fabric, you know? I know it isn't true to the fan art, it's I, I want to use what I've got instead of getting more fabric and never using it. With the cuff, I'm gonna make it like, let's get it like as big as the pocket. Unfortunately, you will see a little bit of the pocket on the bottom, but I don't care. This is my hoodie, I can make it however I want. So I'm going to put this cuff fabric on the bottom, put it all the way around, and then we're gonna cut this down the middle, then work on the hoodie. It was time to work on the grey bits at the end of his spikes. I had no idea how I was going to do this originally, so this was me just eyeballing it. What I ended up doing was I ended up putting one of the spikes on a plain piece of paper and then drawing down the sides to make a triangle. After tracing, I drew out some zigzag lines inside the triangle to map out the grey. I wanted to recreate the fan art somewhat, and to the best of my ability, I wasn't sure how this was going to work, so I had to do a test run first on a spike that I had made. The one on the side is the one I tested it on, which meant that if I did screw this up, I would have to make another spike, but I had plenty of fabric for that. I pinned the pattern to the grey fabric, and then I cut it out. Recording this, just in case I break a needle. What I've done is I've sewn on like the gray tips on the end of the spikes. And now I'm gonna assemble the spike with the gray bit on it. But there's like four layers of fleece here and I know usually my machine doesn't like this. Okay, pray for me. Just gonna go slow, just you know. I can see the light blinking already and my machine being like, gee, what the fuck are you putting me through? <laughs> We're okay. <sighs> Look how bent- wait, wait. Can that focus? I don't think it can focus, but can you see how bent it is? There you go. That's mad. Whoops. Hang on! My thread has snapped. Didn't fucking notice. Right, let's backtrack. Where did we go? We hadn't even started. Oh! Please! Please don't fail me. I believe in you. Until we get past the grey bit, it's it, we're fine, it's just getting through the grey bit. Considering we're, we're sewing on top of four layers here. Oh, we're past it, thank god. No needles were broken, we're safe. <laughs> oh god! Alright, let's finish this and then let's turn it inside out and see what it looks like. Moment of truth. Hopefully this work, works out better, as I have it in my head. Hang on, I'm gonna use a paintbrush. Please work! If you don't, I will cry. Do you see what I'm trying to go for?
Hmm. That's not worked out the way I wanted it. Fuck! Okay, I think back to the drawing board. You can see where I was going with it. I think I need to make it longer. I think that's the thing. This is the part where it becomes a little bit patchy because I didn't record any of this. So instead, I'm going to describe to you what I did with silly little drawings that I made in Fire Alpaca just now. <laughs> the original attempt failed and the reason why that is, the grey spikes are a lot lower down and they are not long enough on the base. So when I got to the stage of folding it over and sewing it inside out and then turning it out, you saw that the grey spikes were pretty non-existent because of how small they were and the way they were positioned, like near the bottom of the base the base being the blue fleece. Going back to the drawing board, I then cut out the spikes again, but I made the tips of them longer in length and the pattern itself wider in width. I intentionally made the gray spike bigger than the base because I had planned to hand sew it, yes, you heard me, hand sew it onto the base. You can see here that I'm hand sewing down the edges of the gray spike. Near the bottom, there is some excess, but I cut that off at a later time. I'm sat here happily hand sewing away. It seems like I'm having a jolly old time, but it wasn't at this point until it hit me that I had six of them to do. <laughs> One eternity later. And then there was six. I can't tell you how long this took. My hands were hurting afterwards, but it was time to get back to the sewing machine. Hello. Let me just zoom in. 
There we go. Hello, I am wrapped in a lot of layers because it is very cold today. Not cold enough to see my own breath just yet, but it's getting there. So I finished the hood for now. That's the hood. That's what it looks like. I have yet to add in the lining on the inside, which is just here. But before I do that, I need to sort out the hood, like the jacket bodice part of the hood, sorry. And what I'm doing here is I've turned the pockets outside, like the wrong way out to make sure I don't cut through them by accident. And I'm going to cut a, a straight middle down the bodice and that will be where the zip goes. And then once I've done that, I can then add the lining on inside the hood there and attach the hood. And then we can work on the zip. It's been a hot minute since I've worked on this. Um, a lot has happened since the last time I documented this progress. But don't worry, I am still going, despite life trying to get in the way. And also despite the fact that my laptop died on me and I almost lost my projects. It survived a blue screen. I'm quite impressed, actually, but um, I have a new PC on the way, so... I will be back to editing pretty soon, um, but in terms of this video, I'm gonna have to start again. Um, I've obviously explained it in the beginning. As of right now, it has happened quite recently. <laughs> I swear to god, I can never edit or even make a successful sewing vlog without something happening. Like, all of my videos are just a mess because of like different time periods in like the week or the months that I go along making something. It's like there's so many jump cuts between different times and different moments of like where I am. So I can never make something smooth and I'm sorry, but uh, here we are. Today is, what is the date? Mm, 20... 21st? 21st at 20, is it 21st? Let me just check. Is it 21st? Yeah, 21st of November today. I thought it was December and I was about to freak out. But no, it's the 21st of November today and we're halfway there. <laughs> Okay, I've just pinned everything. This isn't attached yet, but I've pinned everything. And I have a feeling this hood is gonna be very big. Well, let me rephrase that. This hood is gonna be heavy. So I don't think it's gonna stay on my head as much as I would like it to. I had the same problem with my Sonic one. So uh, this is a thing that I can't avoid. One thing I will say is I underestimated, you can see here, I underestimated how long this was. Um, this is the end of the hood. This is where the zip's gonna go. So the the end of the hoodie doesn't quite reach there. It's a mistake. That's a miscalculation on my part. But it doesn't matter because once we put the grey band, like around the edges, yeah, this won't matter. Going to be hand sewing the hood on. I normally hand sew my hoods on. I never actually put them under the machine because I don't trust them under the machine. Or more importantly, oh. That's not good. I heard something rip. Are we safe? Are we safe? We're safe. I heard something rip, I swear to God. Like I said, this hood is very heavy. What is it like in the mirror? Oh my God, that's big. Oh my God. Oh yeah, wait, the pockets are turned inside out, aren't they? There you go. Yeah, I heard something rip and I think um, I'm safe. Are we all right? Yeah, we're fine. Ugh. I don't want anything to rip at this point in the process. 
Wait, let me change the camera angle so I'm not crouching so much. I love this. I love this so much. The only problem, look, 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 the hood will fall down because um, it is very heavy. But like I said, there's nothing I can do about it because that's kind of like a mandatory thing. Like even with my Sonic cosplay, the hood falls down and it is kind of held on with a wig. Whereas with this, I'm not held on with anything, it's just my head. If I put the hood up, I'm just going to have to hold it up, I suppose. But basically what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand sew the hood on. Then I'm going to get my grey gray strip of fabric, put it all the way around down here. These corners here, as you can see, they're flapping. I'm probably just going to fold them in like that. So it makes that seem a bit more, like, smoother, like the transition from hood to bodice. And the zip's gonna go here once the grey bit's on and then we can put the fur on the cuffs and then i think we're done still a lot to work uh, work blah, 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 words still a lot of work to do but i'm really happy with this this is so cute if i let my head just stay still like this it stays up but as soon as i there's nothing i can do i'm just gonna have to live with it not quite practical not as practical as i wanted it to be but i'm really happy with it and i'm still gonna continue wearing this the next day the problem is this is not long enough in length so what i'm gonna have to do which i don't want to do but i don't really have a choice is i've cut strips of gray and i'm going to have to sew them together like that after i've done that I fold them in to a tube and then turn the tube inside out, which I was going to do anyway, but um, I underestimated! There's a spider on the fucking... Is that a spider? Yeah. Hang on. The, the phone might fall. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> anyway! I'm going to be cutting strips into this grey fabric um, and then putting them together and then turning them into a tube and then turning the tube the right side out and then we're going to put the tube around the trim of the hoodie and then that should cover all the rough edges around the hood so nobody can see them and then I get to add a zip. Remember when I said that I wasn't originally going to put the fluffy stuff around the neck? This was that moment. So once again, I tried it all on just to see how it all looked together. I grabbed my meter of fluffy fabric and folded it lengthways. I doubled it over just to get a rough representation on how it would look around my neck and then realizing that the spikes got in the way a little bit. After moving the spikes a little bit and getting them into the right position, I finally got the fur around my neck and looked in the mirror. You can see on my face that I had an, an internal battle deciding if this was the right thing to do, then realizing that, oh my God, no, I have to do this because this looks really cool. And I sighed because I realized that I had more work to do. Do you know what I mean by work? I had more hand sewing to do. I just want to say how fluffy this fabric is. Like, it triggered me and I couldn't stop rubbing it against my skin. It was so soothing. <laughs>
I have worked with fur fabric before, but not as long as this. The last time I had worked with fur fabric was when I made my two tails for my tails cosplay, but that was years ago. But from that experience, I knew that I had to get the fur out of the way before I sewed anything. If I didn't, and instead if I had just sewn the seam without trying to brush the fur out of the way, then the fur would get caught inside the seam and it wouldn't look seamless it would look a bit weird because that was the mistake I made with my two tails. To tackle this problem and to make sure that the seam was seamless, I used a comb and some got to be hairspray. You can see in this footage that I combed the fur inwards so that it was pointing towards the middle. And I used my hairspray sparingly to make sure that the fur stayed in that position. I felt like this was very important to do because I felt like that if I didn't secure the fur to go in one direction, when I got to the sewing stage and sewing down that seam, the fur would have got caught in the seam because there was nothing sticking it there. And that was the one thing I didn't want to happen. I repeated that method for both sides of the fur before turning it over and very carefully lining up the seam, making sure that there was no speck of fur coming out of that seam and it was all pointing in the same direction. Once I was satisfied with that, I then pinned it all together and then put it under the sewing machine. We have one more thing to do, and that is sew on the fluffy cuffs, and then we're done. When I was looking at the hoodie without the fluffy neck on it, I thought to myself, something's missing. Like, it doesn't look that good. Well, it is good, but it didn't look exciting or like that interesting. So I think the fluffy neck does make it. And I'm glad I made it work because sewing that fluffy neck was the thing that I dreaded the most because fur fabric is tedious and annoying but I managed to make it work and I think it really adds to it. It's in front of me right, right now and I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah boy. Anyway, I'm gonna go and get something to eat cause I'm really hungry. And then when I come back, I will be hand sewing these cuffs on and then it shall be the reveal. Cannot wait to showcase this. It's been too long. <laughs> I should have finished this early. You know, life got in the way. And so I'm so glad it's almost done, but I will see you guys in the reveal.
Ah! Uh, I knew I was gonna knock that, sorry. Comfy. Comfy. Just making sure I'm in the middle of the frame. It's wrap up time, baby! That was a bit too enthusiastic, wasn't it? I never know how to present myself sometimes. Sometimes I think to myself, yeah, I'm gonna be so enthusiastic. And then other times I think, wow, that's a bit cringe of you, G. Let's, let's retake it. <laughs> let's do another second take, because that was cringe. Doing YouTube is still very new to me. And I just know that when I look back at my old videos that I'm going to cringe in like a few years time. My thoughts about making this hoodie has been a wild one. Like I said, if my laptop hadn't have died on me, this video would have come out sooner than, you know, now. I actually enjoyed this. The last time I enjoyed making a hoodie was when I did my Freddy Fazbear hoodie, um, the security breach one. And I absolutely loved the process of that. I, again, poured a lot of love and care into this hoodie as well, especially since it was based off fan art. I contacted Naka and showed them the photos and everything that I had taken once I had finished the hoodie, because I also cosplayed Sonic when I did this at Mavi's house, and I was actually supposed to record the reveal part at Mavi's house, but I forgot. And I showed them the photos and I, I, I thanked them for making the fan art and everything, and they were over the moon. I think they appreciated just the fact that I took time out of my life or out of my routine to make their fan art come to life. And I said to them, you can keep the photos, you can post them, do whatever you want with them. You know, I don't mind. This has been inspired by you. And if Naka is watching this, I hope they really enjoyed the process that I went through to make this because I utterly enjoyed making it. Like, thank you for creating the fan art that you did. Without it, I wouldn't have been inspired. I have a few critiques about this hoodie though. So the fluff, it molts, especially around the sleeves and like around here, it will molt. That's to be expected though with fur, especially fur on this sort of length. I have worked with fur before, but not on this scale, you know, like the fur I've worked with is like minute, but with this fur, I knew that it was gonna get in the way in some form so whenever i like talk with the hood up and i'm talking or whatever i will just find there's like there's like fluff in my on my tongue or in my mouth and i have to go eh, to take it out because i can feel it there and like just drink it like there's another one it just <laughs> they're everywhere i'm like a dog i'm molting everywhere and because the fur is so long i have to brush it through sometimes because it gets knotty like I expected the neck to get knotty. It's actually the sleeves that get knottier than the neck. So I'm like this all the time. After this video, I'm gonna have to brush through this again because I can see the edges just getting tangled. Wait, I can just, I'll, I'll show you, look, I'll show you what I mean. Like, I don't know if that's focusing, but can you see like, there's like clumps, there's a few clumps on the edges and it just looks, it looks horrible sometimes. I could just do this look and there's... <laughs> ah! I knew that was going to happen, but I, d I think I underestimated on what kind of scale and how often that would happen. My other critique is the hood is very heavy. This is actually heavier, like the spikes on this are actually heavier than the spikes on my Sonic cosplay. I thought that stuffing the spikes with teddy bear stuffing was going to help it be lighter, but in fact it had the opposite effect and this hoodie cannot stay on my head. As you saw in the footage of the reveal part that I had to constantly hold up the hood like this all the time or with one hand. I mean, it's cute for photos, you know, when I'm like, mm. after a while my arms get achy and it gets kind of annoying because I just want it to stay there. I absolutely love how the spikes turned out. The spikes are the best thing about this. I'm so proud of myself. I think one of the things I struggled with was the, um, was the grey, was the grey spike on the blue base. I had no idea really how I was going to go about doing that in the first place and so I had to like screw up an existing spike that I had made to get it right. Thank god I had enough fabric to make another base because I would be one spike short. Even though the hoodie can't stay up on my head, 
I can live with that. This isn't a cosplay. It can be used for a cosplay, but I just made this because I wanted it. I actually wore this out in public. So when I was at Mavi's house um, just a couple of weeks ago, we went to the fish and chip shop after we went swimming and I wore this in the shop. And um, the reactions I got from the workers was rather sweet. One of the women who was at the check who was like on the till she saw the ears and the spikes and she goes wow you're so talented and then one of the guys who was cooking the fish he was like turn around you know do us a 360 and i did and it was so sweet because i got some real big compliments i wish i had recorded it i really do but it made my day the fact that i took it out into public and people were so positive about it and they were like oh my god that's so cool and when i told them that i made it myself they were blown away that's why i do what i do like sewing and stuff that's because it's like the reactions i get from people are so sweet i think like apart from the assembly of it i didn't enjoy the hand sewing part i did a lot of hand sewing <laughs> but it had to be done because I, I didn't know how else i was going to attach the things to it but i would never make this again I would not make this again i love how this turned out but some parts of the process was very annoying. Anyway, that's all from me. I'm actually recording this on Christmas Eve of 2022. So this video will come out in the new year. But I, all I want to say is Merry Christmas from me, from the past in 2022. And if you're new or old to this channel, thank you for sticking around and maybe subscribing. If you don't subscribe, it's absolutely chill. And I shall see you guys in the new year.